hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As we give God the praise and the glory and the honor is a due unto him, hallelujah, Lord, it's none like you, oh God, you reign, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you are an awesome God, hallelujah, you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of our faith, oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, you are sovereign God, hallelujah, you are the Prince of Peace, oh God, we thank you, oh God, even now, Father, as you will sit back down and just have your way on today, just Holy Spirit, just have full range on this class today oh god and we ask that your glory hallelujah will rest and shine in on today even the more oh god father we ask even now father as you will hide me behind the cross oh god as i decrease oh god in order for you to get the glory that we increase in you even the more allow us to be your mouthpiece oh god speak through these these clay lips of clay oh god in the mighty name of jesus and I ask right now, Father, we begin to dialogue into this lesson, oh God. We begin to dissect it, oh God, and begin to get the words of wisdom and knowledge that we need to apply to our marriages, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, that you're doing a good thing and a new thing in each and every one of these marriages, oh God. Hallelujah. I thank you even now for full respiration. I thank you for even reconciling these marriages, oh God, that's on the breaking edge, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you and I celebrate oh god that a victory is already done in your macklin name jesus and we thank you and we seal this prayer with the blood of jesus and we thank you and we all say amen in jesus name amen god bless god bless amen well good evening good evening we welcome you all tonight uh to our kingdom building book club and i thank god uh for you all joining in tonight is for the mary uh for the married couples as well, the, those who desire to be married, amen. Uh, this book we coming out of is called Marriage Covenant by Derek Prince. It's, uh, we ordered it out of Amazon. So you can go ahead, it's never too late to order your book. Uh, it, it doesn't take long for it to come, you know, arrive. I, get, I think I got my book less than a week. So um, definitely um, if you're interested and you know someone that could use this uh, teaching, Go ahead and even tag them or even Facebook them uh, uh, and message them and let them know, hey, I, I know this is something that we all can use, amen. These are good tools that we can utilize, amen, uh, to continue to build uh, our marriage, amen, on biblical principles of God's kingdom, amen, amen. So I just want to go ahead and we're going to actually uh, talk about last week, um, lesson we talked about kingdom marriage we talked about uh, covenant marriage as well so if you guys have any notes on last week's notes or even the uh the the actual reading of, of that chapter one i mean of chapter two i'm sorry because we still got to complete it if you can kind of give me some type of information on what you learned from the class on last week um, mute if you could god bless okay hello lovelies um discipling and genesis genesis 2 24 and that's genesis 2 24 um what is a covenant that we are covenant keepers then being united and connected ephesians 5 31 to 32 ephesians 5 31 to 32 and then another verse was leviticus 29 and 5 leviticus 29 and 5 and saying but i to all of them and god's covenant keepers and God ordained, ordained the institution of marriage, and Satan hates it and he duplicates it with homosexuality, and the, how parents can handicap us, and problems arise when not leaving the parents, and communication is always open, and couples are incomplete without each other, and a closeness bond on closeness bond on earth. Don't bad mouth, and children don't, and teaching that children just don't disrespect and have each other's back, defend each other no casualties and an enemy can cause division stay in the word fast and pray get more and more out of the word don't bow down to idols keep each other's attention marriage drama free mutual submission god's glory represent the church and the bride without blemish um then then the god's first husband wife and children ethical responsibility and god intervenes and function under god's authority and then like when things are falling apart, pray and biblical binding things and Genesis 2.16 again, Genesis 2.16, Romans 
5 and 7, Romans 5 and 7, take our vow spirit, take vow seriously. And that and it says don't take it out don't when argue, don't take it out on your spouse go back and stay within reason rebuke the devil um church shouldn't say stupid stuff isaiah 54 and 10 isaiah 54 and 10 grow in prayer always resolve issues forgive quickly let the good outweigh the bad and the high we and that christ is in the church the highest commitment um and how to handle disputes, Matthew 5, 15, 18, Matthew 15, 18. And most offenses result from a misunderstanding and to know and maintain peace in the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, Ephesians 4, 30 to 31, and Ephesians 4, 30 to 31, and the how Satan can take can gain advantage of you over us. 2 Corinthians 2 19, 2 Corinthians 2 19, Matthew 18 35, Matthew 18 35, Mark 11, Mark 11. Okay, acknowledge God and God. Okay, and Isaiah 55 and 9, Isaiah 59, 55 and 9. Go forward, trust in God. Psalms 30 and 11, Psalms 30 and 11, Hebrews 10 25, Hebrews 10 25. And resentment can, can consume your joy. It opens doors to depression and isolation. And Colossians 3, 8 to 9. Colossians 3, 8 to 9. Matthew 24, 10. Matthew 24, 10. And I also have offender. Hold the offender accountable. Matthew 18 and 6. Matthew 18 and 6. And then restore a falling brother. in Galatians 6 and 1. And one of the questions was, what have you allowed in your house? And don't grieve the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, and Ecclesiastes 4.19, Ecclesiastes 4.19, and that's all the notes that I put down. That was pretty good. You covered pretty good. Um, that's good. Amen, amen. All right, so we're going to go ahead into the video. Uh, Sister Taylor, did you get a chance to watch the video on uh, Bill Winston talking about the covet, covet, covenant marriage? Sister Taylor? Yes, ma'am. I did watch it. I didn't hey, end man, up taking you, notes. You didn't what, baby? You I didn't, didn't take any notes? I didn't take my notes, but I watched it twice. I just okay. didn't, didn't get a chance to take my notes. Okay, okay. All right, well, Liz, you're gonna be you gonna be uh my um uh, number one student tonight. <laughs> okay. All okay. right. Hey mom. I, God bless I you, have, mom, for joining. I have notes. Okay, for the covenant marriage by Bill Winston. Um, God has a divine for divine plan for you and I. And I was watching this, I think, of Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. And side note. And he designed to give us his best. Will he we be his best to us? We think about the love of God and how he reminded us again how he, God wants us the very best for us. And God has not created us to be poor, and he has not and he has not created us to be abused or manipulated. Psalm eight and five, Psalm eight and five. And created in his class, look at how we love each other. We establish to receive God's best in everything. And in direct this alignment with God's terms, we have to renew our mind. David reminds us to, re to restore our soul and mind. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 13. This chapter says so much about how the love of God works. Being born again, the love of God is shed abroad by the Holy Ghost. Restored to a new place with God. We have a new perception of reality. We can love people who are unlovable. That, I thought that one. Isaiah 54 and 17, 54, 17, Isaiah 15, 4, 4, 17, that no weapon began to come into a covenant with alignment with God's word and come into a alignment with God's word. And then we have to line up with God's word. And when we get married, we enter a covenant with, enter a covenant. First Corinthians seems in 13 again, first Corinthians 13 again. Said, um, one of the other notes was put the other person 
first and start putting the other person first and putting it into practice. We'll be surprised to see what happens. And it's like sowing a seed and like a child and a man, like with a man and a husband with a child. Husband loves your wife, the agape love. Loving your wife, no matter the situation, showing love and affection. Husband, like reading the word, how can he lead when he doesn't have the word in him? Respect and went by faith and apostle Paul case by case. And when women and when women pray, follow God, follow God, we tend to leave out the supernatural sometimes and about and about how to lead the unbelieving one and the depart. And three types of people, the Jew, the Gentile, and the church of God. Interesting things about Jesus, then Jews, I mean, Bible speaking about divorce as a sin, and we are under grace and ask God for forgiveness. Matthew 19 and 8, Matthew 19 and 8, Romans 5, 12 through 21, and it all starts of complications that come with divorce. God has a way of healing us, and God always leaves us a, leaves us a way out. He always uses that way so he can heal us. Thinking of the love of God first, because God first loved us. Ephesians 5.31, Ephesians 5.31. And how the man will leave his father and mother and they should become one flesh. And the oneness is more than a spiritual journey is a joining. It's a soul that is joined together. And that we are God, that we are God is the one that puts the things together. Do it God's way. Stay together. Don't question God. It's a co um, covenant regrets. Okay, I think I wrote that down. But children to be a heritage from God. Matthew 15, 28, Matthew 15, 28, keep God between us and great faith, keep our part in a covenant, marriage so our kids will be protected, Matthew 18 and 10, Matthew 18 and 10, Matthew 15, Matthew 15, covenant family, the children's, covenant family, the children have angels, speak word to help the children's future, believe in our children, believe on our children's behalf, then the power of the tongue, that there's death and life in the power of the tongue, and that money is the biggest reason of arguments and a lack of knowledge in how to be treated. Providing intimacy, the just shall live by faith. And then the bread of word transforms us. Be transformed into the, to the image of Jesus and don't let the enemy push buttons and that have to work and leave God right in the middle. And we are created in God's class. Those are all my notes. Wow, I think she did an excellent job. What you guys say? I, like she covered it. That's awesome, awesome. You guys definitely want to go and play that video back uh, again. Um, it's called uh, "Covenant Marriage" by Bill Winston, Pastor Bill Winston, and it's definitely a uh, good meat. Definitely something you can um, begin to chew on because it 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 really uh, lay it lay the biblical foundation on. Um, marriage uh the covenant of marriage amen hallelujah okay so we're gonna go ahead and start now if you guys got your pens and paper you know what time it is is no taking time that's right get your pen and paper i should never have nobody coming to the class empty-handed come on y'all memory ain't that good you can't memorize everything that we talk about in this class so get your pen and paper come on come on get your pen and paper ready so we can start taking good notes so next week you be prepared okay as i want each one of you guys i'm gonna be pulling on you guys because that means y'all either sleeping on the class or y'all out to lunch one or the other y'all ain't y'all gotta come prep y'all gotta be prepared because i'm gonna call on you just to see if this is something that you 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 you're eating and digesting or is this something that you gadgetating back up throwing back up because it is it's not it's sour to the stomach i'm just saying so if it's good meat then you'll be able to digest it properly amen 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 okay so we're going to talk about what is the nature of the covenant what is the, the nature of covenant okay and malachi uh 2 and 14 malachi chapter 2 verse 14 says but you say why does he not because the lord was witness between you and the wife of your youth and to whom you have been faithless through though she is your companion and your wife by covenant okay 
So that's in the Old Testament. Okay, that's I know a lot of people was like, okay, that's Old Testament. But let's let me let me say it goes on into the new. It goes on to the the new as well, because we gotta understand what covenant is. See, covenant is uh, described by the scripture of of of, of binding a relationship uh, with is meant to last a lifetime that means binding the this is a covenant binding the relationship is meant to last a lifetime amen so this description will not deal with the signing of a so-called marriage covenant but instead will emphasize that knowing the biblical truth about the faithfulness of a covenant keeping god come on we serve a what type of god a covenant keeping God. Amen. So it is it is my content that that we we come to know that the biblical truth regarding covenant and 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 the and number one, the covenant involves write this down, involves a walk into death. Walk into death. And what do you mean by that? That means that it that that is producing a supernatural a oneness between covenant partners. Amen. And, and that is ultimately withdrawal. Next one, number two, withdrawing nothing from God. Okay. So this is true. What the truth, what what will set you free, amen. And John 8 36, John chapter 8, verse 36 talks about this. So free to live as we should in our marriage and not to live as we please. Did y'all catch that? Good evening, Pamela. God bless you. So what I say, free to, free to live as we should in our marriage and what not to live as we please so if we live as we please that means we're selfish that means we we got pride in the way you know uh uh so you heard what uh Liz said early that we have to put our spouses some before us you know their needs you know what is it that they need you to do if they need you can you can volunteer do something you know that you could do the something that bring a smile to your spouse's face to it you know to to make his day you know uh without him asking you know so amen so marriage is an institution of God because what God created marriage. All right. When he created marriage, he said marriage was a holy matrimony. And, you know, when God creates something and what it is, it is all good. <laughs> OK, so according to that, it dictates the nature and the laws of divine inspiration so it was an essence uh ingredients in the happiness of eve and so is a basic part of society so it tighten heightens it's perfect it's perfect this is the marriage it's perfect the pure the the fresh and the serenity jones serenity of joy as, as in the garden so the scene that every beauty and the temple of God, and so it was been extended to the present hour of our social blessing to smooth and sustain uh, us in, in a midst of, of a depressing and de a difficult circumstance of our failing condition. So we know that when, when sin entered into the world, once uh, Adam bitten uh, uh ate in the forbidden fruit then sin entered it didn't enter on eve it entered what with the with the head so that's when the sin entered and so now the marriage began to get you know marriage began to have its own spill of things and people wasn't marrying for the right reason um and then malachi was talking about how they were married they will they will leave their first love they will leave their first love, the youth uh, 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 spouse, to go marry pagan uh, women, and and they would divorce their uh, their their youth of uh, wives that they had fell in love with and fell for pagan women. Y'all, that y'all, that sound like some stuff right now that's going on. A lot of that people marrying. Uh, um, leaving a, a, a Christian marriage and leaving for a pagan 
a, a, a witch or, uh, or going into the new age. So a Christian leaving a Christian marriage to go uh, to explore into a new age uh, uh, thing, you know? And so that right there, that, that, that shows that unequally yoke, okay? It's just like, you, you know, I, an individual said that they, was, they marry a Muslim, a Christian married a Muslim. Now, you know, uh, the male is going to be the more dom dominator of the, of the relationship because he's a Muslim. And what he's going to do is try to convert you uh, into uh, take you, you know, a bad mouth Christianity. So, you know, right then and there, those are the, that, that's a red si sign, right? A red flag that you shouldn't engage in someone that is not a, of, of Christ, that's not a, a Christian, you know, and don't believe in the same God that you bow down and worship too so now here it is you guys constantly arguing i know i know uh, plenty of couples now they arguing back and forth fueling now they separated and, and it's just all that we could have like really prevented but a lot of times you got to know that a lot of times uh people can come into your life just to kill the destiny they can be on an assignment to kill that destiny that calling or that anointing that's on your life you know that could be their assignment from 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 the adversary you know and so we have to that's why we have to be our discernment has to be sharpened we got to test the spirit by the spirit and not just be desperate and anxious uh for anything or just want a piece of man and thinking that eventually he'll change or vice versa, a woman should change, you know what I'm saying? So you, you, you're, you're taking some, you know, you're taking some um, high risk, you know, of, of getting it, jumping into a marriage because you feeling like this might be your last opportunity to, to marry ever in life. Now the devil is a liar, a liar because you gotta take this, when you take this, uh, this covenant, when you take that vow, you you said that you it's it's, it's in the scripture too. Where it talks about that vow. It's better not to t decept the vow or say that you you commit into this vow than than to say it and not and not stand on it and not feel fulfill it to the you know to the till the end. Okay, and that's when when I say to the end, it's it's, it's saying what the vow at the end, what it says until what death do us part. That's the vow, right? For better, for worse, right? For richer, for poor, for sickness and health, and to what death do us for. So why would you say in an agreement to that? And you, in in back of your mind, you're like, I, I, I just, I just, I, I'm just infatuated with this individual. I just have a a lust for this individual, but I really don't have a desire to be with that individual for the rest of my life. I really don't love that individual. I just got kids by, and I just, you know, feel like I, I feel bad if I don't marry. And then, and then that's where the enemy plays tricks with your minds because you got to understand <clears throat> when you become one. When y'all become one, once you accept it, that covenant and everything, like I said, God is a covenant keeper. And so it doesn't matter if you had hidden modems. It don't matter if you had hangups. It don't matter if you had issues, whatever the case may be, God is going to fix those things if you're willing to want to be fixed. OK, and that's what it's, it's the same thing. You know, it, it talks about in the word we talk about a saved uh, wife will save their husband, vice versa, a non-believer. And, and, and that's and, and that's, you know, the word, you know. So let me go. I'm, I'm moving a little fast, you guys. But just to say, you know, back then when Malachi, they was that's what they was talking about, that they was willing to leave their their first love. And that's just that's so profound. That just tell you exactly what God, you know, like we do now with God. We will leave our first love to go on, to move on, to do what we want to do, to have, you know, to like, you know, a lot of us say, well, I, I, I just deserve to be happy. OK, well, happiness is actually within within yourself. If you happy with yourself, first of all, if you put God first, guess what? Then that's where your happiness can you can be able to be happy within yourself, because now you know your identity in God. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to guess. You ain't got to hate on your spouse because your wife or your spouse might be more advanced in the in, in the word of God and love the Lord looks like more because they pray sun up sunset. I'm just using as an example. And you may not pick up your Bible but once a week and that's on Sunday. So it it. it just tells you right there that if you're not there with your spouse and you over here up here with your spouse, that's all right. Don't 
Don't badger them. Don't, you know, don't uh, bad mouth them and, and uh, none of that. Just wait and pray until he catches up or she catches up with vice versa. But the, it, the, the job is the husband's supposed to be ahead anyway. He's the head. So that way he's he like like with Adam and, and God told him he gave him specific instructions what to do. OK, he didn't give it to Eve. Come on, y'all. He gave it to Adam. OK, so he was the one in fault because he allowed. He, he allowed to get, you know, wasn't paying attention. I just say wasn't paying attention and just got caught up. And so that's the thing about it. We can't, you know, vice versa. You got to stay focused. Amen. Women, men and God, we got to stay focused. What's God's plan and purpose for our marriage? God said he's building our marriage on kingdom principle. Amen. 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 So just to know this, that we need to apply, uh, I think in Ezekiel, I'm gonna go to Ezekiel chapter 16, verse seven, it said, uh, and I'm just gonna read a, a, a quick of that Ezekiel chapter six and 17, because I'm talking about the self righteous protesting of God's word will not work for God witness, uh, with witness the marriage and the betrayal. So in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse seven, he said, I made you grow like a plant of the field and you grew and developed ex a, a, an entry of puberty. So the, it, it, that's talking about apl applying this uh, Pacific scripture uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to God and the nation, okay? To, uh, uh, so that, and then Ruth, um, I don't want to go down to Ruth. Okay, yeah. Okay, so then Ruth talks about it in Ruth 4 and 11, also talks about, that the elders, then the elders and, and all the people at the gate said, we are witness. May the Lord make the woman who is coming to your home like Rachel and, and Leah, who what? Who together built up the family of Israel. So that's talking about witnessing uh, by the community, witnessing by the community, amen? And then Genesis chapter 24 and 60, Genesis chapter 24 and 6, he talks about uh, blessed uh, Rebecca and, and said to her, um, to her, I sister, may you increase to thousand upon thousand. May your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. And that's talking about the basics of love and faithfulness. Come on. Basics of love and faithfulness. OK, so we know that the covenant is an agreement of a marriage and it's to based on loyal love. Amen characteristic by the protection and care of the partners and dedicated to producing righteousness, righteous, believing children that God may provide. Amen. So number one, and I'm speeding it up a little bit, guys, because we're going to end the class because we got a few of you guys jumped in and we're not going to keep you all night, I promise. But number one, it is about friendship first and foremost. It's about friendship. You should be ha have that communication line open at all times to be able to be your, your husband's best friend. He shouldn't have to go to nobody else outside the marriage to another female, vice versa. You shouldn't be going to another male uh, to communicate about whatever that's going on in your marriage because we, we talked about that emotional adultery. That's already right there. That's a red flag and that will cause emotional re adultery will lead into actual uh, physical adultery adul adultery okay when you start talking outside your your marriage and, and talking to the opposite sex okay about your marriage that's a big red flag that is a dangerous ground to even uh set yourself up for temptation and we know what the three three uh tactics of temptation what it is flesh of the, lust of the flesh uh-huh lust of the eyes and what pride of life those are the three things right there would take your destroy your marriage okay it can be an innocent conversation you know and then the innocent conversation and that individual have a hidden motive to try to sabotage your marriage or even try to to to, to take you know um take that place of that spouse you know what i'm saying because that those are things that can occur because of what you call an innocent conversation where that individual had a, a modem and end up destroying that marriage and you didn't even understand how did you get over here you weren't expecting to, to go that far with that individual it was it was just innocent on your part but that individual had hidden modems to kill your destiny to kill 
the anointing that was on your life. Come on, y'all. So, you know, we, we can't allow the enemy. His game does not change. We can't get weakened by, by the enemy because he's, he sets up baits. He sets up traps for you in order to for you to fall. That's it. But you don't have to eat the bait. Amen. You don't have to eat that cake, anime. Amen. Vice versa. Amen. So what I said, number one, it is about friendship first and foremost, okay? And Genesis uh, 2 and 18 talks about that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says what? Um, I'm going to just go down to 18. It talks about that the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone, and I will what, make her a helper, suitor for him, okay? Amen. So God, when he... He, he made the woman. He said, I'm going to make Adam. I'm going to make you a woman that's suitable for you, that she's going to be a help me for you. So well, why would God say uh, that, that, that man needs help? You know, he's, he's, he's muscular. He can protect. He can work. He can do everything. And he's stronger and everything. But God said it's going to be a time that even sometimes the husband might get weak. And the wife could be able to encourage him or even to pray him through some trial times. Because you know the enemy is, is, is target, is head, is aiming for the head. So if he can take the head out of the marriage, he feel like now I got access to the to the to the wife and to the kids as well. I can do whatever I choose to. So that's why we have to stay on our posts and pray and fast and be able to kill this flesh. Kill that, that, that and also allow that mind to be uh, uh, renewed on a daily basis. Because if your mind is not being renewed, all the stuff that you garbage that you you taking in through the run of a week on the, on your job, on Facebook, social media, and you got people in your DM DM, you know, trying to tempt you with you know all type of stuff. Yes, that's why we have to guard our eye gates. What we watch and what we are entertaining, okay? Got to be careful. Got to be careful, okay? And so it said it's not good for the man to be alone. So therefore, God invented marriage, okay? So marriage is about friendship before it's about anything else. And the sort of friendship that God had in mind is indicated through the use of an often, uh, and, and, and I'm sorry, of an often misunderstanding a phrase, a helper, what was fitted for him, okay? And, and that's what he said, fitted for him. That's like tailor-made for him amen hallelujah so then hosea we already know used the word to god in a relationship with israel that's why when he told go i'm sorry hosea to marry gomor uh which was a prostitute you would have thought god had flipped his wig why god would you have me marry marry a a a, a prostitute and i'm a prophet of you god but god was just showing us examples on how marriage and how our relationship with was God, how it, it was, how it was all set up, you know? And so God, he, he lets us know that he's married to the backslider, okay? And he's married to the people that, you know what I'm saying, that's unfit or, or unqualified or whatever the case may be. You know, if you feel like you unworthy, God is married because he loves us all. He's married to the, 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 the church, okay? He's married to the church, amen? And so, same thing. So in Hosea 13 and 9, Hosea 13 verse 9 says, it says, he destroyed you, O Israel, for you are against me and against your helper. See, that's saying, that, that, that right there is saying that how people now or against God, they reject God, they re reject the truth. They, re they rather believe a lie and, and, and go off a lie than go off what, the, what thus says the Lord or the truth, okay? It seems like the flesh is more eased with that than, than the right thing, okay? Come on. So that's why a lot of us need to, that say and say they Holy Ghost feel, need to be filled again with the Holy Ghost. Come on, because sometimes that Holy Ghost it may have not kicked in when you when you was wondering, I, you got your eyes over here looking off all over to the right, looking at this individual and everything, and you already done sin because he said if you first even looked at a male or female, you done already sinned because that's... You, that's a fantasy. That's already a fantasy in, that, that's rolling around in your mind. All right. So I'm trying to help you guys on today how to be delivered, how to be healed, how to be set free from things that you don't know that's been there 
ever since your childhood. We talking about that perverted spirit. We talking about this lust demon that's, that came in. Perhaps you got touched in as a young girl or a young man as an early age, or somebody solemnized you or somebody molested you at an early age. And now that, that sex demon came in and on your dream, and now you can't even be faithful to your spouse. Because why? Because now, here we go, that door opening, that sex demon now opens up several doors for setting up traps, setting up traps, pornography, self-pleasure. Self, um, okay, y'all know what I'm talking about. So let me move on. So it talks about, uh, let me go back. So rather it, um, we were talking about Hosea. So know that... <clears throat> that even rather it appears to be a communication intimate correspond. God is the heifer that corresponds perfect to our need as a human being, okay? Just as Eve was the heifer that corresponds perfectly to Adam, need as a human being. See, this is the sort of leadership of, I'm sorry, friendship that is being pictured, uh, uh, is, is I'm trying to uh, uh, paint a picture for you all, okay? So it is our friendship of co-equal uh, own others and understand that this is this 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 is what we're supposed to be equal to one another co co equal equal partners amen to each other and then genesis chapter 1 verse 27 genesis chapter 1 27 talks about that as well the man and the woman are what co-equal in value and dignity so god created man in what his own image amen in the image of god he created them male and female who he created them to be right so genesis 1 and 27 also or talks about it genesis 1 verse 27 talk about previous this word uh was also we were talking about the uh uh in genesis i'm sorry we're talking about pharaoh and in in egypt had been described as such as an ex exile uh terms and but now here every man and woman is being included in a, a glorious classification so then they need so let's go to need that adam <clears throat> was a it was a need also because what because of the result had of of the fall okay so it, with that fall it caused it mankind to fail okay as well and so this we got to understand that he, that um he was saying in the word that when god created um the marriage and everything when i was saying it was good he was saying that we when the husband and wife come together as one they are complete okay they're complete amen it's like is what it said this is my like what we used to say this is my this is my uh better half or or somebody would say uh this is uh <coughs> oh pardon me guys somebody uh used to say happy wife happy life and then i heard somebody say happy uh spouse happy house you know so so amen so you know uh we know that um the bible said it is not good that man should be alone so it is not good that the woman should be alone either and that was the original reason why it was given for the gift and the blessings of a marriage amen so number two it, it is supposed to last a lifetime y'all catch that it marriage was designed to last a lifetime why would i say that because that was part of the vow that you took was until death do you for it okay so in the culture that we in now it, it, it it's like as soon as the it, the heat uh in the kitchen we we jump out of a marriage it, it, like popcorn you remember like popcorn on the stove it a jump out of the kettle if you don't out of the if you don't have a lid on it okay so it's just like that with marriage we jump out of it when things don't go the way you want to and then the enemy has something over here looks like the grass is green on the other side but you need to just go ahead and water your grass and manicure your grass and your grass can look greener too but see that's what the enemy do he sets up barricades he sets up things for you to fall into and thinking that you are missing out on something but you already know what the world offers temporarily and what god's in the, the god god has for you is eternal amen big difference big difference so again matthews 19 and 9 matthews 19 and 9 was talking about it that anyone divorced his wife except for sexual sin or marry another marry uh, another woman commits adultery okay and so uh matthew 19 and 10 also talk about this uh, that as well um 
that the disciples were not used to hearing this kind of talk about marriage. So divorce were remarkable was common in the Roman world, Roman world, and as the uh, Jewish world at the time of Jesus. And you you can understand that what was going on then. You know what I'm saying? Where they was look upon the you know they had the sex sin going, and um, y'all got excuse my dog. She she bark at the mailman and has a a fit. But anyway, um, so the only exception that he said is mentioned was uh, had to was sexual sin and it called a phrase that likely denote that any kind of sexual behavior outside the bonds of a covenant marriage. But most the, uh, the Bible or readers recognize that one further exceptions of general rule of marriage uh, st stability. So in 1 Corinthians 7, 12 and 16, Apostle Paul writes as it follows. He said, to rest, I say this, okay? To the rest, I say this. He said, I'm not, I'm not the Lord. If the brother has a wife that who is not a believer and she's willing to live with uh, him, he must not divorce her. But if the, if the woman has a husband that who is not a believer and he is a, a willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbeliever husband has been sanctified through his wife and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. So otherwise your children will be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, it, it, let it be so. And the brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstance. So God has called us to live in peace. Amen. How do you know that your wife, whether you will, will save your husband or how do you know that your husband, whether you will save your wife? We know that the word says it. OK, that's why we have to stand on the word of God. That's why we have to pray. That's why we got to fast and believe and stand, again, stand on God's word. Amen. So three, it said it is supposed to um the the covenant was it the intent was it was supposed to preach the gospel okay it a mar a, a covenant a marriage covenant was supposed to preach the the gospel that there is nothing special about human beings particular human beings or male or females uh together see the bible says that god said let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and the sea of the sea and over the birds and over the heavens and over the livestock and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the uh, earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, and he created him uh, male and female. He created them. Amen. All right. So. Again, that is what mar our marriage covenant was supposed to be able to preach the gospel. We 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 when everything that we go through our marriage wise is gonna whatever the fire that you went through is to purify you, is to is to uh, make you stronger, make you better. Amen. It's to build character in you. It's gonna help you. Uh, G g uh, gain hope in God even the more to trust God even more and have perseverance uh, even the more when it comes to your marriage but instead we we tend to drift away from you uh, we can drift on all the negative and all the hurt we can we can kind of replay that over and over in our mind opposed to standing on what is good what is positive you know and so we have to, we have to, like I said, get up, get, get ourselves together, you know, and stop pointing the finger on what that individual or that spouse is not doing. And if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and start focusing on getting yourself together, getting yourself in, set, in, in, a, in a better standard and relationship with God and God is going to, everything else will fall in place. If you start Focusing on getting yourself together, walking in love, amen. Serving with a, a serving heart, amen. With 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 that with that spouse, you know, even when they acting ugly, even when they acting vice versa. When your wife is acting crazy, are you? I don't want to use crazy, but when I when, when just out of out of character, okay. Still love that person unconditional, amen. 
Because God does. He loves us through all of our flaws. Amen. And matter of fact, he don't keep no record of all our wrongdoings. But we tend to have a whole track record, all the wrongdoings of what our, what our, individ, what our spouse have done towards us. It could happen 10 years ago and they still holding on to it. And you be like, I thought I, I forgot about it. I done moved on and I done forgave and I asked you for forgiveness, but you still holding on to that thing. And it's a lot of times where that's what happens. A lot of times we hold on to unforgiveness because that stuff have came in from, from our childhood trauma has came in from our bloodline and we done held on to unforgiveness so long that it's just almost like part of your underclothes. Okay. A part of your garments. <laughs> Okay, so we, we, we not knowing that we, we have to release that we have to let go of that unforgiveness, you know, amen. So you can so you can flourish so God can use you so you can your your blessings don't be hindered. Your prayers don't be hindered as well. Amen. So it should be a place of permission of generosity and joy. Amen. So the first marriage was a a place of innocence, openness uh, of joy, and the man and the woman were both naked and were not ashamed. And Genesis talked about that two and twenty-five, two and twenty-five. They didn't realize that they was, they they didn't realize that they was walking around in a birthday suit until they what ate the forbidden fruit, and then their eyes was open. So then that's when they began to hide. And then what God said, Adam, where you at? So he God knew where Adam was at. He just wanted to know, Adam, do you know where you at? Because you hiding and you must got you got to know that I know where you at, Adam. We communicate with each other every day in the garden, in the cool of the day. Amen. So I know where you at. I see everything. I see and I hear everything. See that sometimes we think God don't know what we're doing. We think we hiding. We think we running. And God right there. He so he questioned. OK, Adam, where you at? OK, so he he had to, Adam had to know. He done fell out of out of out of position. He 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 running now. He hiding because he done messed up. Okay, so so what I'm saying is that we have to continue, you know, being in a place where you know allowing that unspeakable joy to just overwhelm us to overtake us. Because if you get in a place where you constantly every day just grieve or every day you feel yourself depressed and feel like isolated like you don't have don't want to be around nobody and you just mad you angry you bitter and all that you know stuff is built on top of on top of uh, one another and uh, on each of those things that you're dealing with and now you in a, a dark place and you don't even know how you got in, in into that place and you like I'm trying to pray but I just feel like I can't pray like I used to and every time I get in my word I just fell as fall asleep I just don't have no interest for the Lord no more I just don't have that hunger I don't have that thirst no more I don't have that zeal that fire for the Lord no more because what because we allowed things of the world things to continue to hold us down with and, and that's what I'm talking about holding on to unforgiveness holding on to bitterness holding on to you know all that anger that's building up you know that has built up and then you try to take and then you end up taking it out on your spouse and everything and, and don't realize that you you acting out like that you know you, it's like it's just like what i always tell them it's just like an, an alcoholic or a drug addict they're not gonna admit to the fact that they got a habit they're not gonna admit that they need help you know, because a lot of time because of that pride to tell you, you know, I can I can stop anytime I want to. I can stop doing this whenever I feel like it. I, I control it. It don't control me. Really? OK, then that means that that pride instead of said settle in. And now here you is every day getting drunk because that's that anger issue that or oh, that childhood trauma again that we we talked about. That's why a lot of us had to get healed had to be delivered from that thing that we didn't we didn't suppress it we didn't suppress it with alcohol we didn't suppress it with uh sex and and uh when i mean sex outside of marriage and even you know uh, other things you know when i was talking about with the pornography with the, the masturbation with all that those are those are the different triggers that 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 self-medicate or suppress that pain that you're dealing with there's a pain there okay as a trauma there, all right? So last but not least, number five, is it, isn't, uh, 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 first of all, we, we need to 
make sure that we in God's will. Make sure that we put God first in everything we do. Amen. Because if we say that God is the center attraction of our marriage, so automatic God should be able to look at your marriage and say your marriage is representing what kingdom marriage is supposed to look like or not. Okay, a lot of us may not. None of us, some of us may have not all arrived. We're still a walking progress. We're still working on that uh, of getting, our, getting our, our marriage to the place where it's pleasing to God. And so even if it's not pleasing to, uh, uh, on both parts of you, you know, both of you all not there or uh, uh, have arrived yet, you know, that's where the patient has to come in. That's how we got to wait on God. I'm telling you, I was just saying, you know, it, it might not come when you want it, but you got to know we serve a God that's always on time. So that's why I said when when marriages when they come together, we come with we come with uh, uh, lots of luggage. We come with baggages, and and so that's why they said it's it sometimes you got to get to a point that we need to have a funeral, not a physical funeral, but a spiritual funeral, and we got to begin to die to our flesh, die to our selfish reasons of why we we're not allowing. Uh, like I hear people say, some black like, people like, this is my stuff over here. Don't mess with my stuff. Well, when you marry, it's it's, it's considered ours, okay? Uh, and so when you got you got to break that selfishness and, and die to that flesh. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying is sometimes we need to do a spiritual funeral and and to die off, you know, that flesh so that flesh can die off. You know what I'm saying? So you any type of self motivation or any type of self pride or anything that you may you know feel like you you you're not you noticing that you're not having compassion or patience for your spouse, vice versa. You're not loving that person unconditional beyond their flaws. That's why I say you got to ask God. Let me let me borrow your lens, God. How do you see your son? How do you see your daughter every day? Because I need to borrow your lens, and that's what we have to do. Ask God to allow me to borrow your lens so I can see your son or see your daughter the way you see them because they they belong to God they belong to God amen amen but we cast them out we always say oh they ain't gonna never change well you know why they ain't gonna never change because of what you just spoke out of your mouth remember we talk about the power of the tongue you got life and death in your tongue so stop cursing your marriage stop cur cursing your marriage because know that when we put God as the center of attraction of our marriage, we put them first in everything we do. That word said, we trust the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but we acknowledge him and all that we do, right? And all of our ways. And he will direct our path. So it's just like if you you got your own modems, if you got your own plan on how you're going to do this, how you're going to fix this and how you're going to do that, then that lets you know that you 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 taking you still trying to handle the steering wheel, you still driving uh, the car and, and, and you tearing up stuff in the process. So just go ahead and just give God the whole car and allow him to take control of this situation because you know he god can turn things around you know what the enemy always has his backup plan always have his ugly head sticking in his marriage but you know what the word said what god meant for evil god will turn it around for his good why because god can get the glory god can get the glory so that's why i said everything that you're going through don't don't look at it as a bad thing don't don't uh blame yourself all the time for something that you you you, you didn't have no doings with it it's it's gonna happen but the thing about it we got to be able to make the best of it out of it and everything and say god what are you trying to show me in this process what are you trying to prune me a a a, a bill a bring out of me a a a, a, a uh, fix me in what area and just just be transparent with God and he'll, he'll he'll let you know the Holy Spirit is such a gentleman he's such a gentleman he'll let you know okay son this is what I need you to work in this area of your anger because you take it out everything out on your your spouse vice versa women if we have been abandoned from vice versa, if you've been abandoned from your dad from childhood and don't even know your dad, don't even have a relationship with your dad, then you got that little girl or little boy syndrome. 
And what I mean by that, daddy's little girl, you know, or or or, or the son, you know, want that that thriving for father's attention, need that attention, you know. And, and so a lot of times we get into these marriage, and, and because we have that void there, and we feeling like that 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 spouse should be able to fill all those voids, vice versa. Now you're gonna be sadly miss and miss uh, miss disappointed and mistaken because that's that's not how it's is it's gonna end up going. Okay, so stop putting that individual on a pedestal. Stop putting them uh, above God and thinking that they gonna they gonna be your knight in charm, uh, shining armor, or vice versa. She gonna be your ride or live, whatever the case may be, because it's going to be some good days and it's going to be some bad days, but you're going to be, you're going to have to have some balance. You're going to be going to have to be able to uh, get through some, the, the good and the bad and the ugly. Okay. So every time things go, don't go your way, the first thing y'all need to stop mistreating or abusing the word divorce because things not going your way. We have mis misled that word. We have mistreated that word by using it, manipulating, because you can't get what you want. You know what I'm saying? That That's what we talk about, the rest development, the little girl or the little boy syndrome. If I can't get my way, I'm going to throw a temper or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manipulate and do what I got to do to get what I want. Okay? All right. So, guys, hopefully that it helps somebody because i'm telling you i am trying not to go too long i was trying to stay within our uh time frame and everything if you guys have any questions feel free to go ahead and put it on my facebook live chat uh and i answer those questions vice versa on my zoom if you guys have any questions on my zoom you can go ahead and unmute and answer those questions or whatever you like to ask at this moment god bless you guys Amen. Okay. Amen. So I had a question, but this is pertaining to, she said marriage and, and un uniting of the covenant gives a joy and strength and provides a bond and a union that was built uh, to glorify uh -huh, the image of God. Amen. And then the truth why marriage should be should not be taken lightly. That's true. And I always say marriage is for the, uh, I always say it's for the mature audience. Amen. Because, you know, two, two young people, or two kids try to get married. You already know we talk about that selfishness. You know, we're not trying, a lot of times they're not trying to be in, they're not trying to, you know, be submissive. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any questions? All right, no questions on my Zoom, on my Facebook Live. Go ahead and unmute. Okay, no questions. All right, well, then go ahead and let's open up our books. Okay, again, if you guys would like to. Apostle, you're on mute. I don't know how I did that. Thank you, sweetie. So if you guys got the book uh, or, or purchased the book, go ahead and get it. It's called Marriage Covenant by Derek Prince. And we're on page 49. We're on the second chapter. So you still have time to get your book because this is like an eight-week class where we're going into the, we're on third week now. Yeah, I think we're on the third week. It's hard for me to keep up with them. They be moving too fast. All right, so we're on page 49 and it's talks about, um, Sister Taylor, do you have the book? I don't want to call on you if you don't have the book. Okay, you don't have the book yet? Okay. All right. So, um, Liz, if you you know where we left off at as I lay there? Yes, I'm on it right now. Do you want me to go ahead and start? All right. Please, thank you. As I lay there, wrestling to appropriate appropriate my covenant beliefs in Christ and fighting off these moods of depression and doubt. I happened to read this passage in Genesis chapter 15, and I saw it was Abram's job to drive the birds of prey away. God ordained a sacrificial object, but to keep them intact was Abram's job. Likewise, I saw that God had provided the sacrifice in Christ for me. 
But it was my job to keep those satanic birds from preying on the sacrifice and robbing me of my benefits. So I saw there was a period in which I have to keep driving the birds away. No matter how many times doubt or unbelief or fear would attack me, it would be my privilege and my responsibility to keep those sacrificial objects intact. They were not to be desecrated by the, sa the satanic birds of prey that wanted to feed them or take away from my inheritance. Then it, was, then it says in verse 12 of Genesis, chapter 15, Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, terror and great no darkness fell upon him. This was a very profound spiritual experience in which Abram, as a mature, committed believer, went through terror and great darkness. Does your theology make room for that? Do you know that some of the greatest saints of God go through periods of spiritual darkness? It is not necessarily a mark of immaturity or weakness to go through darkness. <clears throat> In fact, God cannot trust the immature and the weak with that kind of experience. He knows just how much each one of us can endure. Abram did not go through the darkness because he was weak or uncommitted, but, but he went through it because it, it was part of his total spiritual experience. His darkness was a preview of what his descendants were to suffer in Egypt. As their father, he had to share a measure of their suffering. In thir verses 13 through 16, the Lord explained to Abram what's going to happen to his descendants in Egypt and how ultimately he would intervene and deliver them and bring them back to the land of Canaan. Canaan. Then in verse 17, a new dimension was added to Abram's experience. And it came about when the sun had set and it was very dark and behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming torch which, has, which passed between these pieces. The normal darkness of night was added, the blackness of smoke belching from the oven. Frequently in, in scripture, an oven or a furnace tip, typifies the intense suffering. In Isaiah 48 and 10, God said to Israel, Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. This applies at times to all God's people. If you should ever find yourself in the furnace, remember that is where God refines you and tests you. How you react in the furnace will determine your destiny. You are not necessarily in the furnace because you are weak or backslidden or because you have failed God. You're in the furnace because the furnace does things for you that nothing else that can do. In Malachi 3.3, 3, God warned the sons of Levi, his priests, that he would refine them as gold and silver are refined. Precious metals are never purified without intense heat. In the midst of his overwhelming darkness and to which Abram was subjected, a darkness that was both natural and supernatural, there was a flaming torch which passed between these pieces. Genesis 15 and 17. What a depth of meaning there is, there is in that. The flaming, <clears throat> excuse me. The flaming torch was a manifestation of the spirit of God corresponding to the seven lamps of fire, which are in the seven spirits of God, Revelation 4 and 5, that John saw before the throne of heaven. It was at this moment, the moment of deepest darkness, that the Lord, in the appearance of a flaming torch, made his commitment to Abraham. He passed between the pieces and, in doing so, he entered into a covenant. Let me return again for the moment of my experience in the hospital of Egypt. It was at that time of darkness in my own life that the truth of this incident, Genesis chapter 15, became so vivid to me. I learned that there are times of utter darkness when the Holy Spirit will illuminate the only one thing, the emblems of the sacrifice, because that is all we need to see. The sacrifice is the emblem of the covenant, and that the covenant is God's final irrevocable commitment. You may pass through a time when you can see nothing but the one fact that Jesus died for you. That's all you need to know. Everything is included in that. Romans 8.32 tells us, he, he, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? There are times when that is all you can hold on to. It is the covenant made in the sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is how the Lord and Abram entered the covenant. As I understand it, each passed in, passed in tune between the pieces of the sacrifice. Isn't it amazing that Almighty God would do that with a man? It staggers my mind that, and excuse me, 
passing between the pieces of the sacrifice. Isn't amazing that the almighty God would do that with a man. It staggers my mind that in a certain sense, God would come all the way down from heaven and to pass between those pieces of slain animals to make his commitment to Abraham. I am overwhelmed to realize that God would go to a such length to make his personal commitment to a man. Valid only through death. Well, why was a sacrifice so necessary? Sacrifice necessary. Why was that the only way to enter into a covenant? The answer is that the sacrifice symbolized death of each party to the covenant. As each party walked between the pieces of the slain animal, he was saying, in effect, that is my death. That animal that, that animal died as my re representative. He died in my place. As I enter this covenant, I entered my, my death. Now that I am in covenant, I have no more right to live. That explains why Hebrew and Greek make no, no distinction between covenant and testament. The necess necessity of death to make a covenant valid emphasized in Hebrews. For what a covenant is, there must be a necessity by death of those one who made it. For a covenant is valid when only when men are dead. For it is never a force while one is made, one, the one who made it lives. Hebrews 9, 16 to 17. These words leave no room for misunderstanding. There, one who enters a covenant enters it by death. As long as the person remains alive, he is not in covenant. It is also impossible in covenant to remain alive. The death of a sacrificed animal is physical, but it symbolizes a number, another form of death for as one who offers the sacrifice. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Offers the sacrifice and passes through the pieces. The one who does not hereby renounce his all right from the moment to live for himself. As each party passes through the piece of the sacrifice, he says, in effect, to the other. If need I be, if need be, I will die for you. From now on, your interest, your interest to take precedence over my own. If I have anything you need but cannot supply, then supply becomes your, then my supply becomes your supply. I no longer live for myself. I live for you. In God's sight, this act of making a covenant is no empty ritual. It is a solemn and sacred commitment. If we trace through history the course of events that resulted from the Lord's covenant of events that was with Abram, sorry, getting tongue twisted, we see that each party had to make a good on the covenant commitment that the covenant represents. Some years later, when Abram had become Abram had become Abraham, God said to him, "I want your son Isaac, your only son. The most precious thing you have is no longer yours, because you and I are in covenant. It is mine." To his eternal credit, Abram did not falter. He was willing to offer up Isaac. Only at the last moment did the Lord intervene directly from heaven and stop him from actually slaying his son. See Genesis 22. However, this is not the end of the story. God had committed himself to Abraham. 2,000 years later, God, in his turn, fulfilled his part to the covenant. To meet the needs of Abraham and his descendants, God offered, God offered up his only son, but this time there was no last minute reprieve. On the cross, Jesus laid down his life as the full price of redemption for Abraham and all his descendants. That act was the outcome of commitment that God and Abraham had made to each other on the fateful night 2,000 years earlier when they passed between those pieces of sacrifice. All that, okay. All that followed them from on their own course is history was determined by their covenant. As a matter of fact, the whole history of is the outworking of God's covenant, which explains a lot of what is happening in the Middle East. The Jewish people were restored to Israel because God promised it to them 4,000 years ago. He became, he gave it to them in covenant and God is not a covenant breaker. The commitment that he made is a covenant and that is solemn and a total and irrevocable. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to ask Liz to read because she does she does an excellent job. So she we was able to finish that ooh, that chapter. Amen. So if you guys have any questions, uh you can go ahead and ask ask them. Amen. Um, you got any questions? Mm 
we talked about that being in that fire. We was just talking about that. And it just said, you know, being tested in the fire, not saying that you did anything wrong. God is just trying to purify you, you know, get those impurity things out, out of you. Okay. Questions? Any questions? All right. Y'all don't have any questions. Y'all very quiet. Okay. Well, if you don't have any questions, I'm not going to pull tea. Okay. I can go to bed early. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, we're just going to go ahead and pray out. Father, we just thank you for the word on today, oh God. We bless you on today, oh God. We pray that even now that this word, we begin to digest it, oh God, and even begin to apply it. Uh, as well. Allow us to be doers of the word, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask you, oh God, even now, Father, that we'll get more understanding when it comes to our marriage covenant. What does it mean? Get more revelation of it and, and be able to uh, stand on our marriage and not to just give up on our marriage because God, you didn't give up on us. I mean, you are so patient with us. Even when we mess up time after time, you still have that door open and you still have that love for us, you know, to come to enter in uh, as well. So I thank you, God, for such a merciful God that we serve. I thank you even for your grace, oh God, for when we don't deserve it, oh God, but you grant us that favor. So I thank you and I'm appreciative of that as well because you are such a good, good father. And I pray that we'll begin to learn to walk in love and and learn to walk in your shoes how we supposed to be as 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 good wife as virtuous women of god as it says in proverbs 31 be that that particular wife oh god begin to imitate that begin to represent what virtuous wife supposed to look like so god i even thank you even as you're doing a new thing in each and every one of us oh god that you're changing us from the inside out oh god and i thank you oh god that you keep us on the potter wheel oh god mold us shape us to be what you designed us to be before the beginning of the foundation oh god and i thank you and i give you the glory and we in jesus name we pray and i just pray grace and mercy be will go all the days of their life and i pray that your uh your angels, protective angels will be around them and encamping all around them, keeping them from all harm and danger, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Love you all. Ah. Love y'all more. God bless. Right. Bye. Bye, mommy. Amen. Good night, good night.